The Elder Evils are dark entities that live on the outskirts of the D&D multiverse, and their servants are the Starspawn. Tell me a little bit about the history of Starspawn and, and what people can expect in Morningkin's Tome of Foes. So Starspawn return uh, to D&D in Morton Kanan's Tome of Foes, and for someone who isn't familiar with them, the way we talk about them is that they are the servants of these beings we call the Elder Evils. The Elder Evils are a mysterious group of entities that hail from different places in the D&D multiverse. Some of them are associated with that mysterious place called the Far Realm, beyond the Great Wheel. Others are associated with places like the Abyss, the Shadowfell, and other dark places of the multiverse. What the Elder Evils all have in common is they're horrific, they're evil, and also as implied by the name, they are very ancient, possibly older than time itself. And they are sort of these Lovecraftian, beings that exist outside of regular space and time. And the star spawn are their heralds. They are their servants. And the cultists and warlocks who bind themselves to the elder evils will often be visited by star spawn and know that the elder evil that they are connected to is beginning to exert influence on a place in the world because of the presence of various star spawn. So in the book's bestiary, we provide you with the stats for different star spawn, from you know, very uh, lesser ones all the way up to a star spawn larva mage or a star spawn seer. Larva mage is this horrific sort of, you know, spellcastery cloak and robe, but inside it is just filled with squirming, worm-like creatures. Uh, a star spawn seer is this powerful otherworldly entity that has actually taken possession of a high-ranking cultist or someone else who has offered themselves up to an elder evil, and they begin to be transformed from the inside out into this magic-wielding servant of one of these ancient powers. In the book, in addition to giving you the stats for these strange creatures from beyond the stars that can appear in service to one of these beings, we also give you a little bit more information about different elder evils who have appeared uh, uh, in D&D's history. And then we also provide some special abilities that members of their cults might have. Now this is echoing something we did earlier in the book by giving you special abilities for members of diabolical cults as well as members of demonic cults. So in the bestiary section of the book, now we also give you these cult abilities for people who are devoted followers of the elder evils. And we give suggestions for if a cultist is uh, you know, a follower of Elder Evil X, then here's Ability Y for them. Uh, some special, often magical ability that they can wield because of a dark bargain uh, they have made with an Elder Evil or because they have been warped by magic associated with that being. There are a variety of ways a Dungeon Master could incorporate uh, this material into a campaign uh, probably most of it associated with slime and, and various eldritch horrors that you know, will drive people insane. Uh, and one of the themes of all of the star spawn uh, is they're, they're alien, uh, they're horrific, uh, they, they sort of worm their way literally, literally and figuratively into various communities and uh, in concert with a cult sort of rot a community from the inside out. Certainly the kind of thing most adventurers are going to want to hunt down and free the world from. Thank you, Jeremy Crawford, for being on the show. You can purchase more in Kingdom's Tome of Foes right now on dndbeyond.com. I'm Todd Kenrick. Thank you for watching.